Clash between Green Bay and Tampa Bay. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. There is no relationship more intimate between a city and its team than Green Bay and the Packers. For you see, the city of 90,000, dubbed Title Town, owns the franchise. It yields a community feeling that is unequaled in professional sports. Spirits are high as we start the new season, and it's a pleasure to be paired alongside Pat Hayden. Pat. Tampa Bay and Green Bay are convinced they can turn it around this year. Well, you know, Jim, opening day is always a day of optimism and confidence. Both these teams are incredibly confident, and rightfully so. They'll both be better teams this year. They're not afraid to talk about it. You now, we talked to Vinny Testaverde yesterday. I have never seen him as confident as he was. He said, hey, it's time to quit talking about how good we're going to be. Let's go out and do it. There has been a lot of dialogue concerning Tony Mandridge, the top pick of the Packers. He will not play today. He'll be on the sidelines and street clothes he just signed this week. However, there is a player who can dominate a game from the Packers' standpoint, Tim Harris, the linebacker. Tim Harris is the best linebacker in the NFL that you haven't heard from, but he doesn't mind not getting the notoriety because he knows when this team begins to win, he'll get that notoriety he deserves, and he thinks that's going to be this year. A sensational pass rusher, 13 and a half sacks a year ago. You'll see him line up in four different posi positions today, trying to create a mismatch as he rushes Vinny Testaverde. Well, Pat, Tampa Bay has won the toss and will receive defending the South goal. Chris Jackie, a rookie out of Texas El Paso, handles the kicking chores for the Packers. Donnie Elder and Sylvester Stamp standing at the goal line for the Bucks. And the 70th season of the National Football League is underway. Stamps from the 10. Yard return. He is hammered by Johnny Holland. Vinny Testaverde quarterbacking the Buccaneers. His offensive line is set this way. Paul Gruber in his second year out of Wisconsin at left tackle. Simmons on the left side. Grimes, Bruin, Taylor, and Ron Hall is the tight end. Joining Vinny in the backfield, Lars Tate, William Howard, both in their second seasons. Carrier and Hill are the receivers. We'll see Danny Peebles and Willie Drury in passing situations for the Bucks. Well, there was a penalty there on a kickoff, and it looks like the Packers are going to have to do Offside. it here again. Is it off? Five-yard penalty, we kick. We're talking to Ray Perkins about his offensive team today, Jimmy. He said, hey, it, the biggest thing for us to do is to play hard. Because when they played hard this past preseason, they've won the game. Not necessarily they haven't played well, but they need to play real hard on offense every play today to have a chance against an improved Packer defense. Well, Pat, a lot of similarities between these teams. Both the Bucks and Packers 3-1 and one in the preseason. They each lost to the Colts, the only unbeaten team in the exhibition season. And the success of the preseason has helped with the confidence. Again, Jackie will kick for Green Bay. A better boot this time. Elder at the two. A 20-yard return again, Johnny Haller. On the tackle, special teams tackle for the Packers. Packers defensively will line up this way against the Bucks. Brown, Nelson, and Patterson up front. The linebackers, Anderson and Harris on the outside, Noble and Den on the inside. In the secondary, Jakes, Brown, Stills, and Murphy will see Mickey Sutton and Tiger Green in passing downs. The Packers are banged up in the secondary. We'll see if Testaverde picks on them. First and ten. Tampa Bay from its own 23. Flags flies. Lars Tate gets past the 30. Geez, you know, the preseason's over. Your first play of the season, you don't want to have a penalty. The Packers had one on a kickoff, and now the Buccaneers come back on their first offensive play. You're but looking at uh, Lars Tate. This is the, one of the players that Ray Perkins is expecting a big year from. Well, Lawrence Tate was a guy who came out of Georgia as a tailback and... Holding offense, number 69, still first down. And at Georgia, all he had to do was run the ball. He didn't have to block, didn't have to catch the ball, and he was lost a little bit last year, but 
this year, the preseason, he's been able to block, run patterns, and because of all that he knows the system, they think he's going to be a lot more productive runner. Well, a disjointed beginning with two penalties. Stamps comes in and replaces Tate. First and 20, Tampa Bay. William Howard to the 16. Brian Noble and Tim Harris combining on the tackle for Green Bay. Brian Noble, the inside linebacker in his fifth year, really a leader of this defense. The kind of guy that can play you tough in seat, inside, but has enough speed to run from sideline to sideline to make plays like he did right there on Howard. Second and 17, Nickelback's in for Green Bay. Denny's first throw of the year. Bruce Hill could not hold on to it at the 25. Hill kind of lost his balance as he was going for the pass across the middle, Pat. Well, the ball was right there. The thing about Testaverde, he does throw with a lot of a velocity, but Bruce Hill knows that. He never gathered himself out of the break and hit him right in the face mask, but a well-thrown ball by Testaverde. Well, when you come out of the breaks on a field like this, you really have to have your feet underneath you. Six defensive backs in for the Packers. Danny Peebles, a rookie out of North Carolina State, the third receiver for the Bucks, on third and 17. That's Mark Carrier at the 20. Tackled at the 25 by Blaze Winner and Ken Stills, punting down for Tampa Bay. A rookie punter for the Bucks, a position that caused a lot of trouble last year. Chris Moore, number five, the rookie out of Alabama, was recruited to Alabama by Ray Perkins as a quarterback. And he was drafted this year in the sixth round. Well, I saw him punt a few times last year, Jim. Had a sensational year at Alabama. Ray Criswell, the putter last year for the Bucks, was last in the National Football League, just 36 yards a kick. Mickey Sutton will let it rest at the 38. And Green Bay comes out on the field offensively for the first time in 1989. Don Mikowski, third-year man from Virginia, is the quarterback for the Packers. His offensive line includes Ken Rutgers at left tackle, Rich Moran, Blair Bush, man who was picked up as a free agent in the offseason, is the center. Hallstrom, Vinegrad on the right, along with the tight end, Ed West. In the backfield, Woodside and Fullwood, Kemp and Sharp are the receivers. We'll see Carl Bland and rookie Jeff Query as well today in passing situations. Mikowski. Caught on the right side by Woodside. Mark Robinson on the tackle, the strong safety for the Bucks, who line up this way today. Reuben Davis, Kirk Jarvis and John Cannon starts as Robert Goff was inactive today because of a knee injury. The linebackers, Murphy and Moss on the outside, Marv and Randall on the inside. We will see the rookie, Broderick Thomas. And in the secondary, Reynolds and Jones on the corners, Hamilton and Robinson, the old Penn State pair of the safeties, Futrell and Elder in passing downs. Second and seven. Brent Fullwood. Just what Lindy Infani had hoped for. Brent Fullwood is a star waiting to happen. And he reads a centered block extremely well. Watch Blair Bush as he controls the nose guard, Kurt Jarvis. And then again, you get the ball deep to Fullwood, he just cuts back, picks up a nice block by the left tackle, Rutgers as well. Fullwood, a number one draft pick two years ago. They've been waiting for him to be a dominating player. They think he should be a thousand yard rusher this season. That was a gain of 27 yards. First and 10 for Green Bay from the Tampa Bay 32. Fullwood and Woodside split behind Mikowski. Pass to Sharp. Out of bounds inside the 30. 
what you're going to see from this Green Bay offense, Lindy Infante, the head coach, coordinates the offense, and they do not feature one player. You've seen on three different plays, three different guys have touched the ball. He believes in, in spreading it around. Each of his receivers ought to catch 40 or 50 passes during the year. He did say forward ought to gain 1,000 yards, but nobody is going to be featured in this offense. It's a pickup of four on the pass play. Mikowski to Sterling Sharp, the number one pick in 1988 from South Carolina. Here's the reverse. Kemp gets away from Murphy. Inside the 25. Close to the first down, but will be about a yard short. Maybe two. I tell you, Ricky Reynolds, the corner from the Bucks, did a nice job of preventing a big play and staying at home. Otherwise, they had a nice little play set up. That was a play that often featured Philip Epps, who did not make the 47-man roster, Pat. Well, he didn't make it because they felt they needed some receivers to catch the ball this year. Last year, they had 53 drops as a team, and Epps part, uh, was part of that. So they wanted some receivers this year who were going to catch the ball first and foremost. They think they have that. Well, Mikowski comes to the line and calls a timeout on third and two. Green Bay is driving on its opening possession. Don Mikowski, a player with a lot of pizzazz and, and an air of excitement, beating out Randy Wright, who did not make the roster, backed up by Anthony Dillwood. But what do you think about Mikowski, Pat? Well, you know, he really is an exciting player. When he steps out of the field, the fans here always get excited because you never know exactly what he's going to do, whether he's going to throw it, whether he's going to scramble for a big play. And I think the players on his team sense that too, Jim. When he gets into the huddle, they sense that excitement that this, this guy can move the ball. Well, he had tendonitis in his shoulder before last season, missed some camp, and really felt behind on the new system all last year. But he's raring to go as now the Packers face third and two from the Tampa Bay 24. Bullwood has the first down, and he's to the 14-yard line, tackled by Winston Moss. Bullwood just explosive on both carries. Well, after last season, Lindy Infante sat down forward and talked to him, but watch the block of the right guard, 65 Hallstrom, as he blocks down and just clears a little path here for forward, and that's all they want to do is just give him a little bit of crease because the guy has enormous ability. He's got the power to break tackles, and he's got the speed to outrun you. First and 10, Green Bay from the 14. Fullwood, two carries for 37 yards. Woodside. Another first down. Ricky Reynolds and Eugene Marr combined to stop Woodside short of the goal line. Well, this is a nice little drive the Packers have going, and they're mixing it up. They're throwing the ball. They're throwing the ball to different receivers. We've seen Woodside catch a ball sharp, and they've handed the ball to Kemp. They've run the ball with power and some with finesse. Gain of 11 yards by Woodside. First and goal from the three. James Campen comes into the game for the Packers. And they've announced him as a tackle eligible here. First and goal from the three. Fullwood. Touchdown, Green Bay. like Fullwood was going to be dropped for a loss. Yep, ran right through the tackle of Mark Robinson, but a terrific opening drive to start the season for the Packers. What, what great confidence they must have. Chris Jackie's point after is good. Real nice block by the wing back here in the short yardage in, uh, formation, which gave Fullwood a chance as he was left. Watch the wing back block. And again, this play was designed to go inside, but then Fullwood bounces outside, runs right through the tackle of Mark Robinson. This is a new rent Fullwood that you're seeing this season. Plays Brent Fullwood 
three carries for 40 yards on the drive and the three-yard touchdown. Lindy and Fadi has to be the happiest man here at Lambeau Field. Remember yesterday he said that this is a kind of a crossroads year for Brent Fullwood. He said, hey, he's got to step forward and be a major part of this team. And he's coming to camp with an entirely different attitude. Chris Jackie rams it into the end zone. And Elder will down it. Tony Mandrich looking on as a spectator again. Coming to practice this week for the first time and they're saying that he probably will not play until the third game for Green Bay. Well, guys like Mandarich, the dimensions of guys like him are really changing the way this game is being played. 300 pounds and runs a 4-6. Has all the kind of physical, physical capabilities of being a dominating player. He's on a special two-week roster exemption. He will play right tackle when he comes back. Lars Tate on first and ten picks up five. Tackled from behind by Burnell Dent. I think this is an important series here for Vinny Testaverde because you're coming here with all this optimism and enthusiasm that we talked about at the top of the show. And in the opening drive, in the opposition scores on you. So you're down seven. You want to get something going. And you don't want to have three plays and punt here after the opposition just scored on you. So he needs to get at least a couple of first downs here. Second down and five. William Howard plowing his way to the 30. I believe he has the first down. We have an update. Let's take you back to the studio in New York. Brent Musburger. Well, Jim, here's what he does best. Neon Deion Sanders in his first game with the Atlanta Falcons picks up a fumble punt. And Pat Hayden's seen him do this. Here comes the afterburners, 68 yards with this punt return, and Sanders puts Atlanta ahead of the Rams, 7 to nothing. Let's go back to Jim and Pat. Yep. Pat, he starts the week playing for the Yankees. First time he touches the football in the National Football League, six points. That is incredible. Hit a couple of home runs, I think, for the Yankees last week, and now the punt return. First and 10 for Tampa Bay, lining up in the eye. Lars Tate for short yardage. One of the goals for this uh, Tampa Bay offense is to take some of the heat and some of the pressure off Vinny test, Testaverde. They want the running backs, Tate and Don Smith and William Howard, those guys, to really be able to put some first downs and some scores on the board by themselves so Testaverde doesn't have to carry the whole load. That last carry was by Sylvester Stamps, six-year veteran, signed as a free agent by the Bucks. Second down and eight. For Tampa Bay. A blitz show here by the Packers. And he almost intercepted by Dent. Well, that's a clever play by the Green Bay defense. They came up in a blitz look and they tried to have Testaverde audible into a blitz audible, and that's just what he did. It's supposed to be a slant route, but nobody blitzed. They backed right out. He called the audible and then overthrew. The ball may have been tipped, but overthrew the receiver. And Dent nearly had a first, his first interception of the year. That ball was tipped at the line by Bob Nelson and Bucky Dent. That's what they call him here, Bucky Dent instead of Burnell. Almost grabbed the interception. Third and eight, shotgun time for the Bucks. <laughs> Testaverde has his man. First down, it's Carrier near midfield. And Ken Stills tackles him at the Tampa Bay 48. Boy, very nice protection there. We talked about Tim Harris. Rob Taylor, the right tackle, number 72. Watch what he does on Tim Harris. You want a big body on a big body. He does a nice job. He gets a little hold there. Then he tries to cut him. But he gave Testaverde enough time to deliver the ball. Well-thrown pass, easily caught by Mark Carrier. Mark Carrier, 16 yards for the third-year man from Nichols State. Two tight ends in. William Harris joins Hall. William Howard gets the carry on first down, picking up eight. What a powerful runner. William Howard from Tennessee. Brian Noble makes the tackle at the Green Bay 44-yard line. Every offense needs a guy like William Howard. He's 6 feet and 240 pounds. A guy that can get you those two and three yards when you really need it. He's really kind of a, a lineman with an eligible number. An old volunteer. How about that Tennessee win last wow, night? Wow, surprise. Yeah. Knocking off UCLA 24-6 on the West Coast. 
second and two for Tampa Bay. Howard again. Running behind Rob Taylor. He has the first down at the 40. Noble makes the tackle. William Howard, good inside runner, was second last year in the NFC as far as rookies gaining yards rushing, second to his teammate Lars Tate. You know, you, you need a guy that can kind of move the pile, you know, you, you, and, and William Howard can do that for you. The, if you win football games, the NFL, it's, it's teams that get you those two yards when you really need it. Well, Howard's the type of guy that can provide that for the Buck offense. Now the Bucks' first drive of the season, first and ten from the Packers 40. Howard, third straight carry. Darting for five, Brian Noble and Burnell Dent. Making the tackle. You know, if, they, if the Bucks are going to have success this year and take the pressure off Testaverde, the offensive line is really going to have to do a job. And they've got some great players in offensive line. Paul Gruber, the left tackle, and Randy Grimes, the center. Gruber, one of the best young tackles in all of football. But this is a group that's going to protect him. They've done a much better job in the preseason. And thus far in this game, they've opened some seams for William Howard. Saints have scored on a Dalton Hilliard touchdown run. Second and five. It appears as though Harris jumped. Tim Harris for the Packers. Ball start. Number 69. Offense. John Bruin gets flagged for Tampa Bay, the right guard. You know, it's a strategy, I think, that Testaverde and most quarterbacks have against a guy like Tim Harris, uh, Jim. When you, you know when you have a big pass rusher on the other side, if you try, try to change your count and change your voice inflection, Sometimes you can draw the guy offside, but you have to be sure your offensive guys know when you're going to change the count. That time, Bruin didn't know it. Now let's check the cadence on second and ten. <laughs> William Howard in the flat. Near the first down at the 30. Van Jakes. Left corner coming up. This Packers secondary, very short-handed today, Pat. Well, Ron Pitts, who was supposed to start at left corner, was injured and did not start. Van Jakes takes his place, and their free safety is Chuck Cecil. He is injured with a with a hamstring, so Ken Stills will start at free safety. And you have to wonder at what point and how long it's going to take Testaverde to try to go downfield and take advantage of those injuries. So two starters and all out for Green Bay. The measurement, and it's a first down. First down for the Bucks. Well, so far in this drive, though, Ray Perkins has to be happy because Testaverde hasn't had to do it all. The offensive line has created some nice holes for Howard. He's run the ball well, and he caught a nice pass there for the first down. This is the tenth play of the drive. Lars Tate comes in. He's the deep back out of the eye. Lars Tate. Picks up almost 10. That's near another first down. One thing about a center like Randy Grimes, number 60, in the middle of your screen, you have to stay with your block. You can't just hit a guy once and let him go. Now, his head is kind of on a swivel. He's getting some help there from Bruin. It's a screen pass, but he is controlling number 93, Robert Brown. They're all the way down the field, five or six yards down the field, and that makes a successful screen play. A terrific block by Grimes. That's to Verde, four for six for 44 yards. Bubba Grimes, second and one, and the Bucks bring in Willie Drury as a third receiver. Howard, the lone setback. Howard gets the carry and the first. A gain of three. Bob Nelson, the nose tackle, jammed him after the first down was picked up by Howard. Bob Nelson, a former Buccaneer. Yeah, he and Randy Grimes uh, are very good friends. Grimes was telling us last night the nose tackle for his Nelson of, uh, of the Packers. Said he knows him real well, knows what to do against him. He thinks he's one of the best nose tackles he's had to ever play against. Practiced with him for a year and a half. He asked Bob Nelson, what's your job this weekend? He says, take out two players. And he, he's got to tie up a, a guard in the center. Life in the trenches. First and ten. Lars Tate running right. Bruin clears the way a little bit, but the flag is down. No gain. This is 
apparently going against the Bucks. You know, nice methodical drive by the Bucks, but when you have those kinds of drives, you're more susceptible to penalties, obviously, because you're going to have a lot more plays. Holding, number 69, offense, still first down. That's the second holding call against John Bruin here in the first quarter. Right guard, number 69, as he comes and, and pulls and tries to lead the way. First nice pickup block there by the fullback, William Howard, who cleared the way. And then he just kind of latched on to the strong safety, number 37, Mark Murphy. You see he wrapped up his arm there, and that's where the umpire called the holding. So the Bucks now face first and 20 from the Packers' 27-yard line. Lars Tate up the middle for a yard. Bob Nelson, the nose tackle we just spoke of, helped out on that play. Plugging up the middle for the pack. We said that Nelson is not supposed to make a lot of tackles, but just occupy a couple of players. But you'll see him offset a lot. They call it kind of a they call it their Nancy position when he kind of offsets. But he occupies a lot of guys and frees things up for the linebackers. But every now and then, Bob Nelson, the nose tackle, is going to make a play like he did there. Packers take out Brian Noble and bring in Tiger Green on second and 19 for the Bucks. Tampa Bay with two receivers on second and 19. And now Vinny Testaverde calls timeout. It's been a long drive, but the Bucks face second and long. Two. Wimbledon's golden boy, Boris Becker, goes gunning after his first U.S. Open title. But can he topple Lendl, the men's final today? We're at Lambeau Field, the home of the Packers since 1957. Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden for the season opener between the Bucks and the Packers. Green Bay scoring on its opening possession. Brent Fullwood, very impressive. Beautiful afternoon in northern Wisconsin. Temperature in the high 60s. Scattered clouds, but just a gorgeous day to get the season underway. Six defensive backs for the Packers. Second and 19. Pass to Carrier. Cutting back to the inside and getting to the 14-yard line. Well, that's a nice play by Testaverde and Carrier. And Carrier is a guy who is really coming on, and the Bucks are expecting a very big year from Mark Carrier. leading after the first quarter seven to nothing over Tampa Bay the Packers today wearing white jerseys and we've researched this throughout the week and from what we can tell in the franchise 71 year history this is the first time Green Bay has worn white at home well much has been made of Vinny Testaverde's colorblindness they think that, that it'll help them uh, in the heat early in the year and they also believe it may affect Testaverde third and seven Testaverde to Hall and a flag flies. Tiger Green on the coverage for Green Bay. I tell you, that, that, that is a nice lob there by Testaverde, just giving Hall a chance. Again, you know, we talked to Testaverde about this colorblindness thing, and Jim, he, he, he thinks people have made way too much of it. Defensive pass interference, number 23. Let's take a look at Tiger Green, number 23, again. Nice touch. We've seen Testaverde drill the ball, but a big guy has very good touch as well. It was a push-off on the right hand there by Tiger Green, number 23. Two officials there were to make the play. And, you know, uh, Testaverde was also saying the fact that the Green Bay change to the white jerseys in this stadium really helped him. Said may do him a favor. Because of the green background around the borders of the stadium, he distinguishes those white jerseys much better with the green background. 
the trim he said could have blended in first and goal for a drive now the Tampa Bay has been over eight minutes Lars Tate Howard trying to lead the way Tate did he get in yes touchdown Tampa Bay Lars Tate Lars Tate can really fool you with his speed you know he's 6'2 215 pounds and you know we can run tackle from tackle and if you're a linebacker or defensive player you think he's going to come right at you but he also has the kind of speed where he can get to the outside picked up a nice block and broke a tackle for the score Donald Ikwe Buike he held out for much of the preseason resolved things late August now attempting the extra point and we're tied Fullback in the NFL is a blocking position primarily. And watch the fullback here, William Howard, number 43, clear the way for Tate. Just right there on number 97, Tim Harris just occupied him enough that allowed Tate to get to the corner, broke the tackle of Middleton. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Lite, official sponsor of the NFL Player of the Year Award. Miller Lite brings you the NFL's best. AT&T, the right choice. And by the new generation of Oldsmobiles. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Tampa Bay drives 80 yards in 14 plays. 8 minutes and 59 seconds in all. And the touchdown run by Lars Tate. We're all tied, Tampa Bay and Green Bay. And Jim, you see why Ray Perkins is excited about this team and thinks this team has a chance to compete this season. It's a feeling that Green Bay also shares. Both teams expecting that this is the year they'll rebound. Ikwe Buike kicks it away. He's not noted for kicking him deep. This comes to Fullwood at the five. 26-yard return for... Brent Fullwood, Plan B free agents. This is something you probably heard a lot about during the preseason. Well, the Packers signed the most Plan B free agents coming in, 20 in all, and seven made the team. Well, you know, I think it's been a great thing for the Packers because they needed to upgrade their team immediately. They couldn't wait. They're, they're that kind of team. And they at least made their team better by seven positions. And in camp, it increased the competition. Guys were fighting for positions. They had a great camp. These are players that were not one of the 37 players protected by each ball club. Blair Bush is one of the Plan B guys. He's the center for Mikowski on first and ten. Fullwood. First time he's been stopped today. You know, Jim, you mentioned Blair Bush. Here's a guy who played the last seven years in the AFC, and we were talking to him the other day, and he said, hey, the biggest thing I have to do is get accustomed to yeah, NFC yeah, nose tackles. He said, this is the first time I'm playing against Kirk Jarvis. But he also said the game has gotten so much more physical in his uh, 12 years in the league. Guys are bigger and faster, and coaches are asking a lot more of offensive linemen. He could pinpoint the year, in fact, where he noticed the change. It was 1982. Second and seven for the Packers. Woodside splits out to the right. Fullwood, the lone back. Play action fake. And picked off. Picked off by Robinson. Mark Robinson still on his feet. And a flag is down at the end of the play. But the interception by Mark Robinson. You know, sometimes when you, you fake the play action, you don't always see what's happening. You see how he, he turned his head and lost sight of the coverage for a moment. He was trying to throw the ball off uh, over the middle and then came back to his secondary receiver, Woodside. But Walking below the wave on the return. First down. Mark Robinson did a nice job of not only catching the ball, Jim, but doing something with it afterwards. And the illegal block on the return will put the Bucks now at the 45 of Green Bay. You know, Mikowski is the type of guy Lindy Infante tells us that doesn't get too affected by his, his mistakes. He's a, he's a guy that should come back and make something happen the next series. Two tight ends for the Bucks. Benny across the middle to William Harris. 
Here's an interesting guy signed as a free agent, not a plan B free agent, a veteran free agent, second year player from Texas. Saints still lead now as that game at the Superdome moves to the second quarter. Roger Craig has just scored for the 49ers to go up by a touchdown. Well, this is definitely a new look Tampa offense. Testaverde, six of eight, his last five, but primarily short passes. Last year, remember, they threw the ball downfield an awful lot. And some of that led to all the interceptions that he threw. Sylvester Stamps joins Howard in the backfield. Stamps gets the carry, running Gruber's way. Near the first down, and he has it. He has it inside the 35. Brian Noble makes the tackle for the Packers. Well, you mentioned Paul Gruber, number 74, right there in the middle of the screen. Gruber is a guy that solved their problem at left tackle. You know, that's a position that's very important, particularly if you're a quarterback. You need some guys who can really play that position. As a rookie, he was late to camp, but came in and played every single down at left tackle. He'll be there for 10, 12 years, and Vinny Testaverde is not going to have to worry about his backside. We're looking for a Pro Bowl season from Paul Gruber. Played collegiately right here in this state at Wisconsin. First and ten. Tate on the sweep. Tate able to pick up a couple of yards. Another flag is down. This in the Buccaneer backfield. Third holding call now against Tampa Bay in the first half. From the center, Randy Grimes. And again, the holding penalties have put, you know, they always put a quarterback in a tough position, but when Tampa Bay has done a nice job of in their first couple of holding penalties, was not trying to get it all back with one play. Just dump it off here or there, maybe run a screen or a draw, and get it in two or three plays. First and 20 for Testa Verde. Carrier gets half of it back. You know, Paul Gruber has an interesting matchup today. He'll be blocking a lot. Tim Harris, the man we mentioned at the top. Harris there is in a stance now. Ordinarily, he's a linebacker, but when he rushes the passer, he likes to get in the three-point stance. But you see how Gruber, who's a big body, just gets right in front of him, gets his hands right on his numbers, and there's just nowhere for Harris to go. Sensational job of positioning by group. Second and nine. Let's call it second and 12, actually. That's the Verde going for it all. Over the head of Carrier. Dave Brown putting the cover on. Dave Brown's a guy who's been around an awful long time. Nice Just job of coverage there. Remarkable, Dave Brown. Playing in his 15th year. And that is a position where it's very unlikely you'd get 15 years in this league. Well, Jim, I don't think there's any other position in sports, really. I mean, when you think about it, what, what that position requires, you have to be a tremendous athlete with speed. You have to be smart, smart. But here's a guy that works awfully hard every single day. Third down and nine. Great scrambling by Testa Verde. He'll run for the first. Oh, wow. he has it, I believe. That final twisting move may have picked up the first down for the Bucks. Yeah, if he were only 6-2, he wouldn't have made that first down. That, that is a nice play by Testa Verde. And, and you see why you have to be excited about this guy. Because he's got the big arm, and then he's got some real quick feet. It's a great vision. Runs through a couple of tackles. Picks up a nice block right there by Sylvester Stamps. Kept Mark Murphy off. He slows down. A nice little move. And all 6-5 of him stretches out and picks up the first. That's a nice play. This is a man who could not wait for this season to get underway. He says it's time to stop talking and start playing. And he picks up the first down for Tampa Bay. <laughs> Two tight ends. He goes to the backup, William Harris. First down by the big guy from Texas. 11-yard pickup. William Harris's second reception on this drive. So much of football is 
is calling the right play at the right time or making the right read. That time, Vinny Testaverde threw the ball to Harris, but it was the same play that they'd run three times and thrown the ball to Mark Carrier. Carrier ran a little slant, slant route. The linebacker dropped back, and that allowed Harris to get into the flat wide open. It's 10 first downs. Well, we're just inside of 10 minutes of the second quarter. William Howard spinning and picking up four or five. Tackled by Robert Brown in his eighth year. Played collegiately at Virginia Tech. Well, this has really been a, a second impressive drive, Jim, of, of the Bucs. And this offensive line for the Bucs, expected to do so much, have really done a wonderful job thus far in the game. Controlling line of scrimmage, protecting Testaverde. They've overcome some mistakes, but they're knocking on the door again. Carrier and Hill both line up to the left. Double tight end, second and six. Howard, the lone back, has the first down. It looks like Tampa Bay's offensive line, Jim, is, get, is getting so close together, and there's some big bodies in there. There's just no room for any penetration by the defensive front of the Packers, and they're just getting a little bit of a line surge, giving the goal, a ball to the guy in the backfield and allowing him just to find a crease. Ray Perkins sends in an extra lineman, Tom McHale, and Lars Tate rejoins the backfield. This is a man who can fly. They can launch it right over the line with Tate. He's already scored the one touchdown. Here he goes again. He'll stay on his feet and score. Lars Tate puts Tampa Bay ahead. Again, a really impressive drive. They threw the ball to a couple of different players, the tight ends, the outside players. They got some nice push by the offensive line. That's the second drive, really very, very similar to their first touchdown drive. Very methodical, very effective. Just plowing their way down the field. The short routes by Testaverde on the mark. Howard up the middle, and Tate does the rest at the goal line. Igwe Buike converts. And the Buccaneers lead it 14-7. Well, as you see Lars Tate go over the right guard in the center again and then cut back. It's, again, you see why Ray Perkins and his team is bring, bringing with confidence because they have a lot of players who believe they're going to win a lot of games this year. Well, Lars Tate has scored both Buccaneer touchdowns and Vinny Testaverde really only going long once. That was a pass to Carrier in the end zone, but the short route's very effective as Tampa Bay has completely controlled the clock, the time of possession, and now control the lead 14 to 7. Pat, what do you think about the Bucks? You know, Jim, ordinarily time of possession is not a very good statistic to, to, to consider, but what they did is get the ball in the end zone. They just didn't have long drives and punt the football. They got the ball into the end zone two times on touchdowns. You can see why Ray Perkins is so confident about this team. Well, it's a team that last year went 5 and 11, Tampa Bay, while Green Bay was 4 and 12. Igwe Buike, Fullwood at the five. 22 yard return, a fumble on the tail end of that, but he was whistled down. No fumble. Well, during the last time out, the uh, trainers and such were working on Vinny Testaverde, who may have had something in his eye. Some grass when he was tackled uh, on the run, perhaps, but he appears to be okay, and, and uh, we expect him to return to the ball game. The most talked about eyes in all of pro football. Yeah, they really are. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of frustrating, uh, all this talk about uh, the, the color blindness. It was supposed to be an innocent comment he made, and all of a sudden everybody's uh, changing their jersey colors on him. To our Terry Bradshaw, as a matter of fact. In fact, the Bucks will be wearing white this year at home for the first time. <laughs> They say it's because of the heat. <laughs> Mikowski to Woodside. Well, Bob okay. Jones and Ricky Reynolds on that side, but good yardage on the first down play by the Packers. Mikowski has sat on the sideline and, and seen what the Buck offense has done on those last two possessions. So he, he knows that he can't turn the ball over and he can't just have three plays and punts because his defense is not stopping the Bucks right now. So it's up to Mikowski right now to keep the chains moving and get something on the board. Reuben Davis 
Tampa Bay is being helped off the field. Being helped off the field. Sean Lee comes in to replace him. 14-7 bucks midway through the second quarter. The Fighting Illini, they stunned USC. Now they'll fight a topple Colorado. The season premiere of college football on CBS Sports next Saturday. Lindell and Becker later today. Lindell holds a 7-6 advantage lifetime over Becker. That should be exciting. Reuben Davis on the sideline. He got poked in the eye. And he's again replaced by Sean Lee. This play is whistled down. The play is dead. Even though the Bucks have recovered the fumble. Pat Haggerty, our referee today. Ball start. Offense. Right guard. The play is dead. Let's go back and look at Reuben Davis and the injury. We talk about line, uh, eyes a lot. The left hand of the offensive lineman, Vinegrad, right there, goes right in the eye of Reuben Davis. You see him go, he's going to hold his eye here in a moment. And that's why a lot of those guys wear those shields, Jim. You know the shields you see guys wearing over their eyes to prevent injuries just like that. We set the clock to 750. That's a big old thumb, I think, of mind grab right in the eye. Looked like the thumb. Reset the, clock. Thank you. Reset the game clock. Davis was a real surprise last year as a rookie. For Ray Perkins drafted out of North Carolina late in the draft in 88 and he started 13 games for him. a great run stopper last year worked real hard this camp to become a better pass rusher and they think he's going to be just that this year that means he was working on his moves and his and his hands and his stunts I think he's going to be a major contributor in the pass rush this season he's uh, strapped on the helmet he's still on the sideline ready to come back in Colts just scored on a touchdown pass to Billy Brooks to tie the game. And now the Rams move ahead of the Falcons. Second and seven after the five-yard step off. Woodside splits out wide. Mikowski to Woodside. Two yards short of the first down at the 35-yard line. Another Defensive lineman just coming into the game. And you see some of the linemen there for Tampa Bay. Sean Lee, number 97. Number 98 for the Bucks. Ray Seals is just an absolute remarkable story to be playing here today in the National Football League. Never played in college at all. Played some semi-pro ball up in Syracuse. His team actually won the semi-pro championship. And Ray Perkins, a friend of Perkins up in Syracuse, called him about him, went up and had a look at him, and now he's playing for the Bucs. You can only imagine how exciting it is for him. Opening day, third and one. Play action, Mikowski over the head of Robinson, and Haddix has it. That is actually Ed West, the tight end. And Mikowski under pressure lofted the ball. It looked like Mark Robinson might come up with his second interception. But there was Ed West, the tight end, to pick up 26 yards. He's not known for his pass catching abilities. You know, we talked about Testaverde's soft touch a little bit earlier. Watch Mikowski here, who does a nice job. They didn't fool the defense here as Murphy puts a lot of pressure on Mikowski, but got it right over the outstretched hand there of Mark Robinson. And well thrown there. Great touch. And West picks up the first down. That's a tough play. Harry Hamilton drags him down. First down for Green Bay and Woodside now running. For maybe a yard. Ricky Reynolds. Reynolds manning that side. Looking at Keith Woodside. He is the designated tailback in Lindy Infante's offense, number 33 in the middle of your screen. But that position has to be awfully versatile. He'll run the ball from the eye formation. They'll use him as an H-back, put him in motion. And then they'll split him out as a wide receiver, as he's done a couple of times today, to catch the ball. He has to feel real comfortable out there in the wide open spaces. Woodside has three receptions in the game. Fullwood, the lone setback. Didier comes in as the second tight end, joining Ed West on second and nine. Another play action fake. Mikowski. 
in the double coverage. He's picked off. That's Harry Hamilton. Hamilton runs it out to the 22-yard line. Both safeties for the Bucks now with interceptions in the first half. Mikowski threw in the double coverage. And again, Mikowski was hoping that the play-action fake was going to force the free safety up and that he was going to try to get Perry Kemp behind him on the post route. The ball was drilled, but Hamilton did not bite on the fake. Two guys go up, the balls get tipped, and Hamilton makes a real nice play. scored first but Tampa Bay has come back with two consecutive long drives for touchdowns and two interceptions on first and ten Lars Tate breaking tackles bulldozing his way near the 30 where Mark Murphy was able to wrestle him down and Van Jakes that was a nice run by Lars Tate Pat Saturday will be in Boulder Colorado Illinois and the Buffaloes Colorado now 2 and 0 in the season after winning yesterday against Colorado State while Illinois I hate to say it but opened up with that win against your alma mater out there in the Coliseum beating yeah. USC Jeff George the quarterback of Illinois one of the country's best brought his team down through two touchdown passes in the last six minutes I'm looking forward to watching him play second down not going to be enough for the first down. James Wilder. James Wilder in his ninth season. He owns all of the Tampa Bay records. Rushing, receiving, touchdowns. Moving in on 9,000 total yards on his career. Seventh active rusher in the National Football League. James Wilder. And now you get yourself in a third and short situation. They got they have two big backs, a big old offensive line. Paul Gould, we got Howard and Tate. This offense is designed for these kind of short yard situations. Third and one. Just stepping forward for the first down is Lars Tate. Just hurtling his way forward to the 35-yard line. You know, and right over the center, that's a little bit unusual. Most times in short yardage situations, you see guys go over guards or tackles. But because Randy Grimes is doing such a nut, nice job of controlling the nose, they decided to go right over him that time for the easy first down. And you see the first down stats, 13 to 5, the Bucks. Green Bay picked up most of the five on its opening drive. Since that time, it's been all Buccaneers. First and 10. Wilder, cutting back to the middle. Picking up five yards. And Stills makes the tackle. What's it like for a guy like James Wilder to see all of these young players at skilled positions for Tampa Bay and still be a part of this team? What does he lend to the Bucks? Well, he, he lends incredible experience and work habits. The thing about James Wilder, he's, you know he's going to give you his best shot every day at practice, and that's good, I think, for young players to see. Second Certainly in the game, you expect him to give his best, but I think it's just kind of an attitude that James Wilder had that's important for young teams. He's the lone setback on second and four. Two tight ends. Testa Verde gets away. And now throws it over the head in the vicinity of James Wilder. Tim Harris was coming in. And the wake-up call for Tim Harris has been answered. I tell you, not too many quarterbacks can throw a ball 30 yards with just the wrist, as Testa Verde did there. But again, Tim Harris, we've talked a lot about him. This time he beats Paul Gruber overpowers it doesn't necessarily out quick him but Testa Verde does a nice little move here but this is just a flick of the wrist and the ball goes 30 yards and again he prevents a huge negative play by just getting rid of the ball Tim Harris came steamrolling in there and then it was Sean Patterson putting the pressure on Testa Verde third and four Tate and Howard back in there Pass is caught by Bruce Hill for the first down. Well, you know, this, this is an awfully important series for this Packer defense. They're going to have to find a way to slow down this offense. 
because uh, they're just not having a chance. Every time that Testaverde drops back, no one's really putting a lot of pressure. And we saw Harris a moment ago, but on the short passes, no one's getting their hands up. No one's getting in his face, and they haven't stuffed the run yet. Vinny now walking over to the sidelines as we approach the two-minute warning. Tampa Bay's offense in gear and impressive, leading 14-7. Two minutes to go in the second quarter, and the Buccaneers seem to be manhandling the offensive line, taking control of the defensive line for the Packers. Paul Gruber, one of the guys up there, as the Bucs continue to drive. You know, Paul Gruber just was beaten a little bit by Tim Harrison. Ray Perkins said Gruber has the perfect temperament for a lineman. He's highly competitive, but when he does get beaten, he doesn't let it bother him for four or five plays. First and ten, the sold-out crowd at Lambeau Field now has come to life to help aid the defense. Testaverde on the mark again. And it's Mark Carrier. Mark Carrier with another first down inside the 35 and a hurry up offense for the Bucks. Well, looks like they're going back in the, uh, into the huddle, but we've seen Carrier be a uh, primary target of Testaverde. He and about four other Bucks took karate in the offseason, and they feel Carrier, that those karate lessons have helped him catch the ball and avoid defenders a lot better than he did a year ago. He has five receptions in the first half. A pitch to Wilder for maybe two yards. Talking about Carrier taking karate lessons. How about Gruber at the line? What can he do? Watch the strength there. Again, what he does is he gets his body in a position, just screens out to play, and he's got strength in his arms. You've got to have powerful arms and quick feet for a big guy to play tackle. It's become a highly skilled position in the NFL. Second down and eight inside of 50 seconds. Testaverde on the right side. Hall trying to get out of bounds, and he does. And he picks up the first down. You know, I mentioned that they were going into the hurry-up offense, and then they kind of backed off of it, Pat. This team just burned about a minute off the clock, but it didn't seem necessary. A bit of a surprise. They do have two timeouts remaining, but now time becomes very much a factor. It was funny watching Ron Hall catch that ball, Jimmy, and talk to the coaches, and they say, hey, he, he's a great blocker. And when they say that's kind of a euphemism for me, that he can't catch the ball very well. But nonetheless, he's done a nice job today of getting himself open. When the opportunity arrives, he does catch the ball. 43 seconds left in the half. First and 10. Then he has his man Wilder. Inside the 10, another first down. And with two timeouts yeah. remaining. He uses Tampa, one there. Yep, Tampa Bay takes one. Leaving themselves with just one. And Vinny is now 12 for 16 here in the first half. Over 130 yards. You know, we talked about Paul Gruber's arm strength, number 74 for less the screen. Watch his quickness now. Tim Harris and Gruber has been a compelling matchup thus far today. And Gruber so far is doing a nice job. He got, he got his body be in front of him before that time. As he sees Harris break inside, he gets his helmet in front of him and cuts his legs out from underneath. That's a heads-up play by Gruber. 14-yard pickup on the pass play to Wilder. First and goal from the nine. Wow. William Howard. Wow. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. That was incredible. That was incredible because Test Verde was all primed to drill the ball downfield. Nobody came open. He scrambled around a little bit and then took enough off it. I mean, really, Howard was only a couple of feet in front of him, took enough off, off it to lob it in there so he could catch it easily. First touchdown pass of the season to Test Verde. 13 for 17 in the opening half. Heat wave week A. That, that hit the, that hit the uh, upright, left upright, no good. Again, I, th this is really impressive, although the, the pass was only in the air for a couple of yards. What's amazing is Testaverde's trying to get the ball down, but he's going to drill it right there. Nothing happens. 
and then he takes a little enough off it. He's a tall quarterback, saw Howard crossing over the middle of it, didn't drill the ball, made it a real easy catch. Again, here's the upright that uh, Igwe Buike hit. He hooked it a little bit too much. Igwe Buike did not miss a point after all of last year. Now he misses one here in the first game of the 89 season. Well, well the, Jim, there's 25 seconds remaining here in the first half. And the, the Packer offense, they still have two timeouts. So unless they get a return here, they're going to go into the halftime down 20 to 7. And I think the first thing Lindy and Fonte is going to have to do is get his defensive team together. They're going to have to play with a lot more enthusiasm and intensity, I think. Three straight drives Tampa Bay has scored on. Fullwood will drop to a knee in the end zone. Coming up at halftime, Brent Nerve with all the scores, highlights, and stories. We'll send you back to New York. And we'll also have another report from Pat O'Brien on that NFL lottery taking place out in Oregon. You know, opening day as, as a player, uh, Jim, you, you so much want to win that first game. Yeah, they all count the same, and there's 16 games, but it means an awful lot to you. It's, it, it's something you look forward to all summer and all winter, all through training camp. So it's very important, I think, psychologically for a team to win that first game. 25 seconds left. Green Bay will operate out of the shotgun. Kowski setting up the screen. Fontenot. Urban Fontenot picking up nine yards. Will the Packers use a timeout? Yeah, they burned one there. Fontenot, another one of the Plan B free agents. Came over from Cleveland, where he one time played for Lindy and Fonte. And Tony Mandrich looking on and looking at the scoreboard. <laughs> Still laughing. He's a real character. I talked to him before the game. and He actually revealed, Pat, that he had a contract on the table from Lou Duva, boxing manager, to fight on Thanksgiving Day against Mike Tyson for five million. I'd fight Mike Tyson for five. <laughs> I think I would too. I'd be there right now. You know, it, speaking about the Tyson matchup with Mandarich, you know, he, he said after his first day that his legs felt like they weighed 600 pounds. And he thought he could go 15 rounds with Tyson. That's right. That's an excellent point. Interesting, he'll be playing right tackle when he does come back. Not the left side like Gruber does for Tampa Bay. This is the way it looked last year in the Central Division. A race between the Bears and Vikings and then Tampa Bay, Detroit, and Green Bay. Well, Jim, and I think all three of those teams, uh, Tampa Bay, Detroit, and Green Bay, are, are all three improved. Certainly we have seen that out of Tampa Bay thus far today. Green Bay, I think, is an emerging team. And Detroit gets off to a new start. New head coach, of course, Wayne Fonts, and new offensive system. Second one, final seconds of the second quarter. Mikowski trying to race for the sidelines. Oh, he has the first down, but time now just dwindling away. Moss and Mikowski <laughs> exchanging shoves. It's like Tyson and Mandarich. Okay, their last timeout, two seconds left, and how many times have you seen the Hail Mary pass or the deep pass where you hope? But I've seen lots of lots of teams win games or score touchdowns in that play, and you, you got to give it a shot. You have to give it a chance. You, you have a real athletic guy by the name of Sterling Sharp, who's a wide receiver for the pack. Throw it up and give him a chance. What has happened here for Green Bay after looking so good on that opening? possession where Brent Fullwood was just so explosive picked up 40 yards took it right in for an opening score and since that time nothing for, for Green Bay. Well, Jim I think their offense particularly their offense is so much a, a rhythm game you have to get into a rhythm and they've been on the bench so much because the Bucks have been controlling the ball the offense hasn't had a chance to get back into the rhythm of things. Final play of the first half. Jeff Query a rookie comes in Along with Sterling Sharp. Mikowski. Query's over there. Pass falls incomplete. That's the end of the first half with the score. Tampa Bay 20, Green Bay 7. Sending it back to New York. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by your Toyota dealer. Whatever car or truck you choose, you'll love the quality. Who could ask for anything more? 
City Corp. Because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. And by United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. So at halftime at Lambeau Field, 20 to 7 Tampa Bay over Green Bay. And we've talked about one of the hot issues during the preseason, that involving Plan B free agents and how it affected Green Bay. But another topic that's been often discussed now in recent weeks has been the steroid issue. 13 players in the league were banned for a month because they tested positive. And two starters, perhaps, for Green Bay. Offensive linemen. Mike Arier and Keith Euchre. Could this perhaps be affecting the Packers today? Well, they're both tackles, Arier and Euchre. Remember, Mandarich has uh, just signed, so I think they could affect the tackle position so they're not moving the ball particularly well because they're having some trouble on the ground. But just generally on, on the steroid issue, I think uh, we're kidding ourselves, Jim, if we only think there's only 13 guys out there who, who are on steroids. I was a player a number of years ago. Unfortunately, the, there are players. Uh, I think the NFL needs to continue to take a hard, hard stand on it, and we need to continue to educate young people because now high school kids are, are getting involved in it, and it's terrible for you. Uh, but we've got to do more and more uh, education, I think, of these players so, they, so they don't have too many guys doing steroids. I agree. It is a joke that the league actually tipped off when the yeah. testing date would be. So I mean, everyone was warned. 13 still tested positive. Well, we're getting ready now for the second half as Tampa Bay leads 20-7 to against the Packers. And we'll continue from Lambeau Field as we get set for the third quarter after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. Federal Express, the best way to ship it over there. And by Allstate, for home, auto, and life insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. I think Tampa Bay has dominated this game at the line of scrimmage. How about 18 first downs in the first half for the Bucks? The team record for a game is 30, so they could actually threaten that record today. Now, Paul Gruber, the offensive tackle, when he signed as a rookie, had the largest contract ever signed by a rookie offensive lineman. That mark, however, was broken last week when Tony Mandridge signed a four-year, $4.5 million deal with the Packers after holding out most of camp. Now, earlier today, I had a chance to talk with Tony Mandridge. Now, for everyone knows, he threatened to fight uh, Mike Tyson, the heavyweight champion. I asked Mandridge just how close was he actually to pulling off that much ballyhooed bout? It was close. Uh, it was a lot closer happening than I was to sign with Green Bay six weeks ago. I think that uh, people don't understand. People think that I came out and said I want to fight Mike Tyson. Well, Lou Duva, who's a boxing legend, and Shelly Finkel, who's a promoter, flew out to L.A. to see me, and uh, they put down a contract in front of me for $5 million. It guaranteed me $5 million to fight on Thanksgiving Day and for the heavyweight championship of the world. And I had to, you know, I had to think about it because I didn't know if I was going to play football this year. And uh, I thought about it, and I said, yeah, I'll fight him, but I'll fight him for $10 because it's got to be worth my while because I'm going in against this guy who's going to try to tear my head off just like I'm going to try to do to him. And the media seems to forget that part, and the only part they seem to write about is when I retaliate verbally, and that makes the headlines. So actually, a shred of new information from Mandridge, who said no one's really talked about the fact that a contract had been put on the table and $5 million was there in front of him, just ready for him to sign for that Thanksgiving Day bout, but he decided he was a football player first. And again, he is on the sideline, not expected to play until game three. Lindy and Fondi telling us yesterday that I can't sacrifice the team for on-the-job training. And offensive line is not an easy thing to step right into. We saw Deion Sanders sign this week, already contribute today for the Falcons. But, Pat, you've made an excellent point all week when we've talked about linemen. It's different. Yeah, people don't realize how much a mental part of the game the offensive line is. It's not just being a big physical guy. It takes a long time to learn a system. And now the NFL, you have to be a very skilled athlete. It's become a skilled position in the NFL. Equay Buike gets the second half underway. Kick bouncing to Fullwood at the 11th. He's got some running room. A flag is down, however. A late flag.
flag, Fullwood pushed out of bounds in Tampa Bay territory at the 45, but it may be coming back. You know, nothing is more demoralizing for a quarterback like Don uh, Mikowski, who's thrown a couple of interceptions. Holding number 37 on the return. And he sees that his team opening up the second half is going to get some good field position. And you see that yellow flag go down. Boy, it just drives you crazy as a quarterback. But again, big hole here. Goes through the defense much like a politician at a fundraiser and gets to the outside. And again, he's got some pretty good speed, Brent Fullwood does. But again, there was holding a little bit earlier on Mark Murphy. So instead of beginning the second half and the Bucks into the field, it's backed up to the Green Bay 26. Look at time of possession in the first half. Yeah, and remember, too, the Bucks did something with that time of possession. They scored three touchdowns. McCout, Steve, riddled by two. First half interception. Haddox in the backfield. Gets his first carry of the season. Maddox lunging forward near the first down, maybe a yard short. Now, Michael Haddox is not the kind of guy that's going to do a lot of television endorsements, but he is a real important part of this team. Came as a free agent from the Philadelphia Eagles after he got into Buddy Ryan's doghouse, but the kind of guy who can block for you, will catch, get you tough yards inside, a very important part of this team. If you have a bunch of guys like Michael Haddox playing the, as well as they can, you have a chance of winning. He's the backup to Fullwood. Picks up nine on the carry. Former number one draft pick also from Mississippi State, Michael Haddix. He's the lone setback as Woodside now splits wide to the left. Haddix again. First down, Green Bay. Just power driven forward there by Haddix. And a pickup of three. You know, the amazing thing to me about this Green Bay offense, I know they like to spread it around, but Sterling Sharp is a number one draft pick a year ago. They're expecting big things out of him. He only had one catch, and that is it for the wide receivers. One catch in the first half, so even though they like to spread it around, I think they're going to have to give that man, number 84, Sterling Sharp, a chance to use his ability. First and ten. That was just a little short route, too, just thrown over in the flat. I believe netted four yards for Sharp. There he is, Pat. Again, not anything deep, but it picks up six yards. Rod Jones on the coverage that side for Tampa Bay. You know, you talk to Lindy and Fondy, and they, what they really want from Sterling Sharp is to do something after he makes a catch like this. They drafted him out of South Carolina because he broke a lot of tackles after catches like this, and he made a lot of big plays. But last year he didn't, and they're hoping that he's going to be able to create 40-yard gains at a five-yard passes. What he had only one touchdown last year, Pat. Of the 55 receptions, only one went for a score. Second and four. Kowski on target to Woodside. Into Tampa Bay territory at the 42. Fourth catch for Woodside. And again, that, that versatile tailback position as Woodside, who's ordinarily the tailback, lines up way outside in the wide position. Now, when Tampa, you see two receivers, they like to go down and screen for one another. You see Perry, uh, camp number 81, he was the man in the slot, ran the hook route, and Woodside just hooked up on the outside, put that zone defense a little bit in a bind, and Mikowski threw the ball right on time. Gain of 14 yards. Addicts the only man in the backfield. We've not seen Fullwood in the second half. Opening drive. Addicts rumbles for six. John Cannon on the tackle. John Cannon stepping in as a starter today for Robert Goff, out with a knee injury. Well, again, what we've seen Green Bay do to come out and open this second half is, is pretty mix it up a little bit. First of all, they have Michael Haddock starting as their one back. They've given him the ball a couple of times. They've thrown some short passes to give Mikowski a chance to get some of that confidence back. And because of that, they've moved the chains a couple of times. Second down and four. Woodside, first down, Green Bay. A drive that... Well, this is the way Green Bay opened up the, the ball game, actually. The first time they had the football, they drove it. Again, mainly because of Fullwood. Now, 
starting to mix it up kind of like Tampa Bay has been doing. And again, the Packers spreading the ball around, and they're going to force the Tampa Bay defense at some point to begin to tighten the coverage. Although when the field, you get down to scoring position, the field shortens, but they're hoping to draw the coverage up some so then they can go over the top. Blair Bush is out of the game now. He's on the sideline and replaced by James Campen at center. First and ten. Looking for Sharp. He has him on the slant. Down to the 12. Just when we were talking about a moment ago, Sterling Sharp after the catch. This is why he was a number one draft pick a year ago. He's got tremendous ability. He's a pretty big guy, although he lost some weight 5'11", but what he does, he doesn't waste any time. He gets the ball upfield. He turns, doesn't put on any false moves, and picks up another 8, 10 yards after the catch. Harry Hamilton hammered him, but not until Green Bay picked up another first down. On the delay, the give is to Haddix. Pickup of two. Mark Robinson coming up from strong safety. You know, we've talked a lot here about Sterling Sharp, Jim, in this drive. And Sharp is one of those guys, they call him the Larry King of this team because he talks so much. But he's a guy who loves playing the game. And a lot of guys in the NFL get too serious, I think, about the game. But Sharp is a guy who seems to enjoy playing the game of football as much as he did as a kid on the streets of his hometown. They need more guys like him in the NFL. He says, this isn't a job, I'm just having fun. Second down and eight. The fake by Mikowski. He's got a man open. It's West. And West breaks the tackle. Touchdown Packers. Jackie's extra point, good. And it's a six-point ball game. Tampa Bay 20, Green Bay 14. Ed West with his second catch of the day. And what, this one for a touchdown. And what nice sequencing of plays here by the Packers. They threw the ball outside to the wide receivers a couple of times. They faked the pass here. And then they go back to the forgotten man, the tight end, Ed West, who did everything after he caught the ball to get himself in the end zone. That's a nice drive. Watch Ed West here as he gets the Lawrence Olivier job of acting. He's going to fake like he's actually knocked down the tight end. He's the man who caught the touchdown. Gets caught up in the pile, waits a couple of minutes, beautifully timed. I'll tell you, for a guy who doesn't catch the ball much, he's done a nice job thus far in the game on his second reception. Just shook off the tackle, too, of Rod Jones for the touchdown. Donnie Elder at the five. Oh, he's jolted at the yeah. 23. Yeah. Jeff Query on the tackle for the Packers. You know, a big special teams hit like that right after you scored offensively can give your defense a big lift. And that's just what the Packers needed this time defensively, a lift. An impressive scoring drive. Mikowski was 5 for 5 on that drive for 53 yards and a touchdown. And now the crowd's back in it. Now it feels like uh, opening day in the home stadium, doesn't it? It really does. Beautiful sun-swept afternoon at Lambeau Field. Howard, the lone setback. Nailed at the line by Brian Noble. No, Noble, one of several Packers who moved to Green Bay in the area up here to train during the offseason. You know, I, I think it's really important as this Green Bay team grows and gets better. A couple of years ago, they only had three players stay here in the offseason. This past offseason, ten players have stayed here. Noble moved from California and is building a house right here in Green Bay. Second down. Pass at the feet of Bruce Hill. There is an enormous difference here in the energy 
inside of Lambeau Field. Brian Noble is the guy who calls those inside defensive signals. He is a leader on this team. And again, talking to Lindy Infante, what he wants guys to do on this team as they go forward is to step to the forefront, take the responsibility, become stars. And he's hoping Brian Noble will be one of those guys. Noble, an inside backer, but six DBs in for the Packers now on third and long. Carrier looking for the first down. He won't get it. Fumble. No. He was down. After he was down, Mark Carrier on the reception, short of the first down. Dan Jakes on the hit for Green Bay. You know, a lot of times quarterbacks get so upset with the receiver when he needs nine or ten yards, you run the pattern seven yards, and you're three yards short, but that play was only designed. They were hoping Carrier was going to get that ball on the move at seven yards and be able to cut up field for the additional three yards he needed for the first. Chris Moore, the rookie, had only one punt in the first half. <laughs> this one's not a very good one. And the roll brings it to rest at the 36-yard line. The momentum has shifted. The crowd is awake. And the Packers are within six with the football. There is a tie with the two quarterbacks today. Testaverde and Mikowski played at the same prep school, Fork Union Academy in Virginia. And Testaverde actually was the man who showed Mikowski around when he came in on a recruiting trip. Vinny was a year ahead of Mikowski. And their old prep alma mater lost yesterday, however. We looked it up to Lees McRae, 40 to 7. Uh, that Lees McRae, they're a power this year. They are tough. I scouted them. They look good. <laughs> First and 10 for Green Bay. Setting up a reverse, perhaps. Noah fake to Woodside. Mikowski throwing for Kemp, incomplete. Mark Robinson was over there. You know, at Fork Union, Mikowski not only quarterbacked the team the year after Vinny departed, but he also played point guard on the basketball team, and that is a prep school that is very noted for bringing out top athletes to Division I schools. In fact, the center on his team when he was the point guard, the man he was dishing it off to, was Chris Washburn. He's a great athlete, also played baseball, but had a dream ever since he was a kid of playing quarterback in the NFL. And it's, we all like to see dreams come true, and his first start on opening day, his dream has come true. Second and ten. Woodside lining up as a receiver. Fullwood back in there. Fake the Fullwood. Kemp out in the flat. Shakes one tackle, but will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Ricky Reynolds hung on over there for the tackle by the Bucks. You know, the Mikowski told us that the demise of Chris Washburn, who's now been banned from the NBA for life because of drugs, is one of his, well, not one of his, is his biggest sports disappointment. He was such a talented player and uh, just hated to see it. He said this had enormous talent around the league. Opening weekend, Phoenix and Detroit battling in a low-scoring affair. Third and ten, Mikowski operating out of the shotgun. Stepping forward, Mikowski, he is down. First sack of the game for the Bucks. Boy, terrific coverage there by the Bucks as Eugene Marv made the play, but great coverage. Six defensive backs there in the nickel situation. Nowhere for Mikowski to throw the ball, and he did the right thing. He just took the, took the sack. They'll punt the football away. Five-year veteran Don Bracken into punt. He beat out the draft choice competition in camp. Brian Schulman from Auburn, an eighth-rounder. Held on to his job, fifth-year man, Bracken. Air catches called by Futrell at the 22-yard line. Six minutes, 15 seconds left in the third quarter. And Tampa Bay leading by six. The Fighting Illini, they stun USC. Now they'll fight a topple Colorado. The season premiere of college football on CBS Sports next Saturday. 
This final today for Boris Becker will be the first time he's been in a Grand Slam final other than Wimbledon. Three-time winner at Wimbledon. Lindell, his eighth straight year being in the finals of the U.S. Open. It's coming up later today here on CBS. On first and ten, Lars Tate behind Gruber picks up a yard. Noble was over there for Green Bay. You saw a good shot of the flag. The wind has really picked up here, and Vinny Testaverde is, is facing that wind. And again, the defense led by Brian Noble. It's important here that they stuff this Tampa Bay team, force a punt into that win, and get some decent field position for the offense. They'll say it was a gain of two for Tate for Noble's tackle him. Noble, one of the things Noble did in the offseason, not only moved to Green Bay, he says he changed his eating habits. Feels like he's in the best shape of his career. He's having a big game today. Second and eight. And that's Stamps, Sylvester Stamps, out past the 30. And Tim Harris made the tackle. Now, what about Tim Harris so far in this game, Pat? Well, we said at the top of the show he was going to line up in a lot of different positions. He has been inside, but he has lined up his nose tackle, primarily as the outside linebacker. He's dropped off in coverage. But quite honestly, he put some pressure on Testaverde once or twice, but other than that, Paul Gruber has done a pretty nice job on Tim Harris. That's what they're a big factor coming into this game. Third and one, McHale comes in as an extra lineman along with William Harris. Tate in the backfield. Tate, short yardage man, first down, look out to the 40-yard line. Well, Green Bay was in tight for a moment. I thought Tate may break it. First down, Buccaneers. Boy, what a nice block by the offensive line and his fullback, William Howard. But watch Harris. Kept out of the play. First, the tight end gets him. And then Mike Simmons, 62, gets a little piece of him. By that time, the back, Tate, is already by him. Mike Simmons is the left guard on that side. We often have talked about Gruber. Simmons, first-year man from Indiana State. He's been on injured reserve the last two years. Broken leg one year and a knee in 1988. Number 62, Simmons, over there along with Gruber. First and 10, Tate. Maybe a yard. Brian Noble. Well, you see what the Packers are beginning to do on first down. Tampa Bay's had 13 first down plays. They've run on 10 of those. So on first down now, the Packers there went into a four-man front, and they brought their strong safety up. They basically had eight guys up at the line of scrimmage. Vinny Testaverde has not thrown an interception. One touchdown pass. And he's telling us he looked at some of last year's film from the Green Bay game, said, we look terrible. We look like kids out there. The Bucks won both of those games. Second and nine. Tate on the pass completion. And a late flag uh, roughing the passer against the Packers, Robert Brown. I believe that's going to be the call, Pat. Yeah, that's just what Pat Haggerty was back there. That's as a referee, that's his responsibility. Wild, number 93, roughing the passer. You know, Jim, you have known Vinny for a long time as well, knew him in his college days in Miami as we watch here the play left of the screen. Way after he releases it, you're going to see number 93 come in. He's got to stop there. And it was after that he kind of dragged him around for a while then threw him down or tried to throw him down and Haggerty made the call. But... Did you think it was a new Vinny Testaverde yesterday when we spoke with him? Amazing confidence. Amazing confidence. He's been through a lot. He admits it here in the last year. He went through a divorce that he made public. He went through a year last year that could only be described for a quarterback as a nightmare. A league-high 35 interceptions versus 13 touchdowns. And all he's been waiting for... Is the opener September 10 at Green Bay? Yeah, for a guy who had a year like he had last year, he just he was so anxious to start today. James Wilder dropped for a loss. Sean Patterson, Tim Harris, Tim Harris. There was a big play. You know, I've always admired guys like Tim Harris who are noted pass rushers who play the run real well. You know, you, you, you read so much about the guys making the sacks right at your screen, number 97, but here he fights off the block of the tight end. He's not just a finesse player. He could be a very physical player as well as he puts the stop on the, the back there for the loss. 
Tim Harris says, I want to be the greatest linebacker in Green Bay Packer history. There was a guy here named Ray Nitschke one time. Remember him? Ben? Number 66. Little Hall of Fame player. Second and 12. Swinging it out to Howard. Howard will not get away from Harris. Man, he is coming on. Tim Harris. Wow. He's not afraid to show his emotions, too, after a big play. He really is. He gets, gets that, that six-shooter thing. But remember, he is 6'6", 240 pounds. Here we, we see him in pass coverage. He's a finesse player. He can be when he has to light on his feet for a big guy. And you see the strength there. Remember, Howard raised 240 pounds. Third and long for Tampa Bay. We'll call it 10. Important down for the Packer defense. To Hall. Wow. He held on, and a flag is down. Hall was hit so hard, his helmet was jarred loose. Folks, that, that was a beautiful throw by Testaverde to Hall, because Hall was well covered. Offensive pass interference, number 82. Oh. Going against Hall, offensive pass interference. Take a look at, at Ron Hall. Used the hands to push off right of the screen. He's lined up in the tight end. He and Tiger Green, the nickelback, going up right there in the right hand. He pushed off, fought Green off, but then made the catch. But it was a beautiful throw by Testaverde, but a good, good call by the official. So instead of being inside the 20, that's a big one. Hall just saw that helmet pop loose. Ron Hall, a former Hawaii player in college, said he used to walk on hot coals, so I don't think a jarred helmet's going to bother him <laughs> playing without a helmet. Third and 20. Benny to his safety bow. William Howard. He may have gotten in field goal range for Igwe Buike. Well, you, you know, that's a nice little play. Earlier, Howard scored on a play like that, a touchdown. And again, what they have is Howard is primarily a blocker, but when Testaverde holds on to the ball that long, what they'll do is just let Howard slip into the uh, secondary and dump him the ball. Four catches for Howard on the day, including the touchdown in the second quarter. They bring out Igwe Buike. This will be over 50 yards, 52 yards. The holder is the rookie punter, Chris Moore. The guy who was a quarterback in high school, recruited to Alabama by Perkins. 52 yards. <laughs> Igwe Buike, a man who has never missed inside of the 35-yard line in his career on field goal attempts, now makes it a two-score difference, a nine-point lead for the Bucks. Lambeau Field in Green Bay. 70 years ago, Curly Lambeau and George Calhoun founded the Packers, 1919. They played on a field here in Green Bay that had no stands. And as far as paying attendance, well, they passed the hat in 1919. Today, a sold out Lambeau Field, looking on at a season opener, some 70 years later. Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden. Bullwood from the three. 23 yard return for Bullwood. And we remind you that next Saturday we start our college football coverage. CFA action from Boulder. The fight in the line eye against the Colorado Buffaloes. And what a story out there regarding the Buffaloes and their leader, their quarterback of a year ago, Salinesi. Diagnosed with inoperable stomach cancer last May, can't play. Tremendous motivation for his team. The team, the Colorado team, has dedicated their season to the quarterback, Solomon Essay. Spiritual leader, rallying figure. Colorado 2 0 on the season. Wins over Texas and Colorado State. Makowski, look out. That's batted away. 
You know, Jim, uh, for a number of years now, there's been a lot of uh, skepticism and snide remarks going about, the, going around about these two teams. They play in the same division. You know, when they play each other, they say the Battle of the Bays, and everybody thinks they're an F. Well, I want to tell you, both of these teams, I think, are emerging. We've certainly seen it from Tampa Bay today, and I, I think Green Bay is going to be a much better team as well. It's easy to be cynical, but I think the reason they're going to be so much better, they have so, a, a coach who's committed to getting the most out of his players. A lot of it's carryover. Green Bay won its last two games last year to finish 4-12. and 12. Tampa Bay won two of its last three for a 5-11 and 11 year. Woodside may have fallen for the first down at the 36-yard line. I think one of the fun things in the NFL is watching these teams emerge. You know, seeing young teams like the Packers and the Bucks step up and begin to compete over the next few years with Minnesota and Chicago in their division. Well, Tampa last year was 5-11 and 11 and lost five other games by a combined 15 points. But you mentioned that it's been a two-team race, Chicago and Minnesota. You've got these two teams, and you've got the spark of a Barry Sanders at Detroit, who we understand just scored a touchdown to put the Lions ahead in the third quarter, 10-6. Barry Sanders scoring in his debut. Mikowski almost intercepted. Eugene Marr leaping for it at the 45. And Jimmy Johnson, not uh, the kind of day that Dallas wanted to open up with. San Francisco next week will visit Tampa Bay. Talk about frequent flyers. The 49ers open up at Indianapolis at Tampa Bay, at Philadelphia. First three weeks of the season. That was a three-yard touchdown run by Barry Sanders, putting the Lions ahead. Second and ten. Woodside. That was the problem a year ago. Drops. 53 of them in all. And clearly, if this is something they worked on in training camp. They wanted to spend some time making sure the receivers caught the ball before they ran with it. It really reflected some of the people they kept and some of the people they cut at the wide position, uh, wide receiver position. Woodside's made a couple of fine catches in the first half, but he tried to run before he secured that ball. That was the preseason criteria. We want guys with good hands. And the Packers ended up cutting not only Philip Epps, we mentioned earlier, but also Walter Stanley, a starter here. Third and ten. Mikowski lobs it for Query, a rookie. Inside of the 20. Jeff Query. This is one of the... Those kids who made the team a rookie at a Division Three Milligan who can hold on to the ball, and that's the reason he made it, as well as he has excellent speed. 45-yard gain just blew right by Donnie Elder, number 40. He's a rookie. Nobody knows much about this kid, but a remarkable athlete. Fifth-round pick out of Milligan College. Grew up on a farm in Illinois where his father... Farm soybeans and corn. 45-yard pickup. We're at the end of the third quarter. Tampa Bay leading 23 to 14. We now pause for a word from your local station. Coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Subaru. We built our reputation by building a better car. Astro, engineered for today's smaller cars. And by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered for real draft taste. So tap into the cold. We open the fourth quarter with the Packers on the move. First and ten. Brent Fullwood. Boy, the Buccaneers trying to strip the football loose from Fullwood that he hangs on. No gain. Kevin Murphy on the tackle. A moment ago, Jeff Query set up this deep possession for the Packers with a 45-yard reception. Yeah, he's a wide-eyed rookie at a Division III Millican. And I was talking to him the other day. Preseason, he had beaten Raymond Claiborne for a for a big play, a guy who's a great defensive back. And after the game, he was asked about beating Claiborne. He said, hey, he didn't even know who he was. <laughs> Never heard of the guy. One of the top <laughs> longtime corners in the league, Raymond Claiborne, the Patriots. Here's reverse to Fontenot. Billy Ard out in front. 
And Fontenot runs out of bounds at the 13. Billy Ard coming over from the Giants in the offseason. Surprisingly, defensively for Tampa Bay, we have not heard much from Broderick Thomas. He has not left the sidelines but a few times. Well, we expected to see him as a pass rusher. We talked to Eugene Marr, the inside linebacker for the Buck, about Broderick Thomas yesterday. And he said, hey, he is going to be a great player. And when one of your peers and teammates say that about you, I think it's the highest compliment you can get. He's going to be a great player in the league. He's behind because he held out for 43 days, played a little bit in the final exhibition game. Third and four. Across the middle, Kemp. Fumble. Recovered by Bland for a touchdown, Green Bay. Just like a practice. Ray Perkins trying to keep the spirits up of the Buccaneers. Perry Kemp fumbling at the one, but Carl Bland there to recover for the six. Jackie's extra point makes it a two-point game. You know, Jim, plays like this can make the difference between a season where you're completely out of it or when the seasons you're in the hunt. And again, you only get plays, only these looks like a lucky recovery. But what happens when you have guys hustling like Carl Bland was down there running his route, trying to do his job, that's not just an accident. That's a nice hustling play by Carl Bland. Very similar stats for the quarterbacks. But on the scoreboard, well, it's also similar. 23-21 Tampa Bay. And I'll tell you, that extra point missed by Igwe Buike looms very large right now, Pat. Well, it only makes it a two-point game rather than the three. This Jackie drops Stamps back to the two. Sylvester Stamps out of bounds at the 18. Tiger Green over there for the Packers. Igwe Buike decided both games last year with last-minute field goals. In fact, here, the second game of the season, he kicked a 28-yarder on the last play of the game. Well, it's funny, and Lindy Infante said he thought this game was going to be close. He's right. He wants his team in close games this year. He thinks he has the kind of ability to win those games in the fourth quarter. He didn't win many of them last year, but he thinks this year he can. He relished the Packers' close games in the preseason. Their first three preseason games were very close. They won two in the last minute, lost one. But it was very useful experience. First and ten, Lars Tate jammed at the line. Okay, football is very much a game of momentum. And right now, the Packers have it all going for them. And that's when guys have to step to the forefront, particularly a quarterback like Testaverde, and get the chains moving, take the crowd out of it, get the enthusiasm of the defense down a little bit. So he's going to have to come up with some play, run or pass, to get that Green Bay defense calmed down. Danny Peebles to the right. Hill and Carrier to the left. Swinging it over to Howard. Howard near the first down yardage. Tackled by Van Jakes. Again, Jakes filling in today as three members of the Green Bay secondary out with injuries. Chuck Cecil, Mark Lee, and Ron Pitts son of Elijah Pitts. You remember him, of course, back in the Green Bay glory days. Number 22 for the pack. Coach with the Rams. And Presently a, a coach with Buffalo is Elijah. Well, Van yeah. Jakes there. It's not a place they can afford an injury at defensive back. They had two of them hurt already. Third in the yard. Tate. Forward momentum will have the first down. First down for Lars Tate. Michael Magruder comes in to replace Jakes. Magruder comes to here out of the CFL, Canadian Football League. 
And the coaches think that he really has some ability. Obviously, they had a chance to watch him, and well, he played Canadian football, breaks off the cut real well, and kept him on the squad for that reason. They think that he had a chance to contribute on special teams. They didn't think he was going to be here on opening day, however. They're now some three or four people deep into that secondary. Four, I guess. And Howard picks up four yards on the first down carry. Now, speaking of William Howard, he has caught five passes. And, and Jim, I think that shows you where Vinny Testaverde is coming. You know, a year ago, he may well have thrown that ball downfield. But today, he's dumped the ball off on simple little passes to that man right there, William Howard. And who, for a big guy, 240 pounds, has some real soft hands. And that's the difference between interceptions and touchdown drives. When you look at the skilled position players for Tampa Bay, you've got a third-year quarterback, third-year receivers with Carrier and Hill, second-year running backs, Tate and Howard. Howard on second and five, trying to leap ahead for the first, and it'll set up short yardage on third down. Tim Harris coming over there, having a thing to say about that, stopping him short. Well, again, this is uh, another big third down for the Green Bay defense. The Packer, uh, the uh, the Buck offense has done a nice job in all of their short yardage situations, giving the ball to Lars Tate as he follows the big fullback. But they need to slow this drive down because Tampa's just trying to run as much of the clock out and get something on the board as with only 10.30 left in the fourth quarter. Tom McHale, Ron Hall, William Harris, three tight ends. Third in the yard, big play for the Bucks. The pitch to Tate, he won't come close. And Tim Harris is over there, leading the way, along with Brian Noble and Robert Brown, Sean Patterson. Tim Harris has great feet to rush the passer, but he's got great hand to get rid of some block. When you block him, he doesn't stay blocked. There's a couple of guys on his arms, on his legs, but he just fights through those guys to make the play. A lot of pass rushers can't do that. Harris can. Chris Moore. Picks it high. Sutton calls for the fair catch. He fumbles. Magruder trying to recover for the Packers, and I believe he did. The substitute corner, number 20, Michael Magruder on the recovery as it looked like the wind kind of brought the ball back and Sutton had a hard time judging it on the fair catch for Green Bay. Yeah, it, it looked like it landed three yards in front of where Sutton originally thought the ball was going to be. Sylvester Stamps, number 24, trying to pounce on it for the recovery, but... Magruder. Take a look. Sutton, he thinks his ball is going to be there. Then he steps up at the last minute. He really didn't have a whole lot of room to catch that ball. Magruder, number 20, and heads up. And that's the second heads up play we've seen by some Packer players earlier. Bland made the recovery in the end zone for the touchdown. And Magruder really prevents the turnover there. We have nine minutes, 33 seconds left in the game. And Tampa Bay leading 23 21. Bukowski gets away. Not a second time. Reuben Davis went out early with that eye injury after being poked in the eye. Reuben Davis this time makes the sack. Now, I just want to go back to Magruder's recovery there too, Jim. It's a lot of times little things like that which you don't think wins ball games, and it's, it's just a matter of hustling. And again, we've seen it twice here with the Packers, and everybody is doing their job and hustling and making plays. And those subtle little things are the difference between winning and losing games, tight games like this one today. No question. Two key recoveries in the final quarter here for Green Bay. Fullwood on second and long. Winston Moss over there. The ball is loose. And down. it's ruled down. No recovery as Kevin Murphy tries to plow over, leap over for the touchdown. But the ball is ruled dead. Eugene Marv on the hit for the Bucks. He 
and Brent Fullwood back in this series following Villiard gets tied up there. It's a matter of momentum. They think his momentum when he was down there, his knee came down and the ball, the ground caused the fumble and the side judge was right there to make the call. Query to the left along with Sharp. It's Bland and Kemp to the right. Shotgun time, third and ten. Across the middle, Query again. What a cut. First down. I'm telling you, this rookie just dodged three tackles on three cuts to pick up 21 yards and a first down for the Packers. You know, he, he was an amazing guy. We were talking to him just the other day and asked him about what the big difference was. And it, he didn't act like it was any big deal. He thought he acted like he kind of belonged in the NFL. Wasn't intimidated by being on the Green Bay Packers, playing in professional football, making the roster. He really kind of expected it of himself. A lot of confidence from the rookie out of Milton. Now they gave him Max McGee and Philip Epps old number. And he has been shining here. Second half, two catches, 66 yards. First down, full wood. For nine. Harry Hamilton on the tackle in the secondary. Good double team block here by the Green Bay Packers up front. You're going to see Blair Bush and Billy Yard. Then you're going to see Vinegrad number 73. You know, I really doubled down on the tackle. That just cleared the whole way there for full. Well, that's an easy hole. You don't see many large holes like that in pro football. Second down and one. Woodside and Fullwood in the backfield. First down. Fullwood just got it inside of the 40. His eighth carry of the day for 54 yards. You know, Jim, you mentioned a good point a little bit earlier. You have to wonder what Donald uh, Igwebuike is thinking right now if he sees the, the Packers begin to march down the field, get themselves in field goal range, eating up some of the clock, seven minutes left in the fourth, and if they were to able to kick that field goal to beat them, he'd feel pretty bad about missing the extra point, hitting the upright earlier in the game. Missing the point after on the Bucks' third touchdown of the day. Igwebuike. First and ten, Green Bay. Intended for Woodside. Rod Jones and Harry Hamilton on the coverage. Reuben Davis putting a little pressure on Mikowski. Well, those timeouts are going to be a large factor in a close ball game. 640 left in the fourth quarter. And how the quarterbacks use those timeouts as they go forward will largely determine if their team will win the game. Second and ten. Michael Haddix now comes in to the backfield for the Packers. Play action fake to Haddix. Coming back to him. Gets away from Winston Moss. Harry Hamilton stops him. Not until the Packers, though, move it inside of the 20. A 23-yard pickup coming back over to Haddock. And, Jim, you got to love the call here by Lindy Infante, the head coach of the Packers. He knows that the Buck defense likes to run. They're the best running team, perhaps, in the NFL. So you play the, you fake the play action, you roll right, and you watch everybody come. And look at all the five orange jerseys running after Mikowski. And Winston Moss mix, misses the tackle, overruns really Haddix, and that's a nice call and a big play. Ken Rutgers with a big tackle, helping clear the way. First and ten. In a crowd. Intended for Woodside. For those of you who have just joined us, day one. On the NFL's 70th season, Tampa Bay led 20 to 7 at the intermission. Three long scoring drives by the Bucks in the first half, piling up 18 first downs, two touchdowns by Lars Tate. The Green Bay has come back in the second half. Two touchdowns by Green Bay. Just a field goal by the Bucks, that by Igwe Buike from 52 yards. 
Green Bay trying to drive and take the lead. Second and ten. Intercepted by Mark Robinson. And a late flag on Woodside. And that was really unnecessary. Way out of bounds, Woodside. He had two major errors. First, the throw by Mikowski, and then the late hit on Robinson because they had him back up. If the defense could have done a job, they may have gotten the ball back in decent field position. Mark Robinson with his second interception of the game. Unnecessary roughness, number 33, Tampa Bay. Secondary for Tampa Bay. Has seen Robinson with two interceptions, one by Hamilton. The ball was just, he just led the receiver. Mikowski led the receiver just a little too much that time. Try to put it way out in front of Kemp. And then you see the late hit there by, and that, that's a silly error. That's a silly error on Woodside's part. Tampa Bay comes up with the big turnover and leads with 532 left in the game. All right, so Becker and Lindell coming up next. In fact, just a half hour away from the U.S. Open men's final. But a reminder, next week, week two, get started with the NFL today, 12.30 Eastern time, early. Some of you will see Philadelphia, Washington, or the Saints here at Lambeau Field. Later, 49ers in Tampa Bay, plus other action. First and 10. That's the birdie to William Harris. A gain of six. You know, Jim, the difference in this game really has been interceptions. And coming into a game a year ago, you would have said that Tampa Bay would have thrown them. But Vinny Testaverde has thrown zero. No interceptions today. His counterpart, Don Mikowski, has thrown three. And Testaverde told us, remember yesterday, he said, hey, nowhere close. I'm not going to be anywhere close to throwing 35 interceptions this year. Not a great start. So much for the white jersey routine. <laughs> playing its effects. Second and three. William Howard. He does not have the first down. He about third and a yard. Sean Patterson plays winner on the tackle for Green Bay. Somewhere in a quarterback's life, you become not just a thrower, but really a quarterback. And Ray Perkins was talking about Vinny Testaverde in that respect, and he really believes he's controlling the game more. He's controlling the run game. His head is much uh, more in it, and you can you've seen the uh, marked difference in his performance here today. Another member of the Packers secondary shaken up. That's Ken Stills being helped off the field. Magruder comes in to replace him. Van Jakes had already returned on this series. Now remember, now you're asking Magruder to play. A safety position when he was uh, no he came back out because it's a short yardage situation it is indeed third and a yard Howard and Tate in the backfield they're gonna throw dumps it off Howard has the first down well what a nice scheme Tampa Bay has had today that's the this Six catch there by William Howard, and none of them he's been more than downfield, maybe two or three yards. Kind of a surprise call on, on third and one, but good protection, and he just dumps the ball off to Howard for the easy first. Hank Bullard, the defensive coordinator for Green Bay, seeing his ranks defensively really thin by injury. In the secondary now, he has his starters, Dave Brown and Van Jakes, the men who started today, there are two regular starters that were out all the way. Stills is back in there along with Murphy at the safety spot. Lars Tate back to the line of scrimmage is all. And a timeout is called. We're at 314 left in the game. Joe Ferguson, backup quarterback on the sideline for the Bucks, signaling in the plays. 17th year, oldest player in the league, and Ray Perkins says he's incredibly valuable for this team, works just as hard as any rookie he's ever had in his 17th year. 
Joe Ferguson, a backup quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, really a proven quantity. He's been a starter for many, many of those 17 years, a settling influence on Vinny Testaverde, and Ray Perkins says, hey, here's a guy in his 17th year who still stays out late after practice and works with the rookie receivers. We, he'll, he knows his role and will do anything you ask of him. And he may not play a down today, but you know he's helped prepare this team and Vinny Testaverde for the game. Ray Perkins refers to Ferguson as coach. He calls him coach. He's like one on the sideline. Second and ten. Pass is caught by Hall, the tight end. Stays in bounds as he is hit by Van Jakes. Packers with two timeouts remaining, and they'll use another one. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes. Gets it all started. That's followed by Murder, She Wrote, and the CBS Sunday movie Paradise, A Gathering of Guns. It's a two-hour episode with stars Gene Barry as Bat Masterson, Hugh O'Brien as Wyatt Earp, John Schneider as Pat Garrett. That's all tonight on CBS. We're with three minutes and three seconds remaining at Lambeau Field and the Buccaneers with the football and a two-point lead, 23-21. Offensive line for Tampa Bay has done a sensational job. No sacks of Vinny Testaverde. He's only been hurried four times. And remember, they're facing a team and a guy in particular, Tim Harris, who can put some heat on the quarterback. But here's the situation, third and five, and your first, your opening game, three minutes left in the fourth quarter. This is what you work so hard for, because if Green Bay doesn't stop them here, Tampa Bay may well run out the clock. Third and five. William Howard, first down Tampa Bay. He got away from Mark Murphy. Well, I think it was actually... Dave Brown yeah. was over there also. And Jim, you know, I think Dave Brown is going to think about that tackle all tomorrow because if he had gotten his head on the other side of William Howard, he would have stopped him and prevented him from going for the first down. But he didn't get his head in front of him. He gets it behind him right there. But if he got the head on the other side, he would have stopped his momentum short of the first down. 15-year veteran, one of those fundamental things. Even the, the greatest players and the guys with the longest duration forget some things like that sometimes. So a new set of downs, 2.56 left in the game. Now just keep it on the ground with William Howard for four yards. Green Bay utilizes, I believe, its final timeout. No more timeouts for the Packers. They will, of course, get the clock stopped at the two-minute warning. Talk about pass percentage and a player who comes out of the blocks hot. Vinny Testaverde, 22 of 27. Just over 200 yards and a touchdown pass with zero interceptions. Been through so much in the past year, he told us. I put it all behind me, and I'm starting over. And what a way to start over. Tampa, what a schedule. Tampa Bay faces early, Pat. Play San Francisco next week. Teams wow. with double-digit wins the yeah, next four weeks. It doesn't get any harder than that. And that's why I think this game is so incredibly, incredibly important to them for their confidence factor as they head into the next four weeks. They take Tate out now and bring in the extra tight end, William Harris. Second and five. Howard the lone back. Howard. He may have another first down. Brian Noble and Tim Harris along with Mark Murphy, make the tackle. But with no more timeouts, this first down could just about do it. Now they're going to mark it now, maybe short of it. Let's see here, Pat. And there are Ten receptions to the buck, uh, backfield today. Again, we talk about the maturation and the change in style of offense. Last year, again, Testaverde really had to carry this team. It wasn't good enough for anyone else to do so. But now as this young team matures with guys like Paul Gruber and Lars Tate, they can afford to spread it around more. That's just what they've done today. Third and one. Howard for the first down. 
and the two-minute warning. I was surprised Tampa Bay ran another play. They could have read it, let it run down there to the two-minute warning. But it's really inconsequential now because the first down is picked up by the Bucks. They have the ball in the lead. Two minutes to go. This Packer defense has not forced a turnover today, but they're going to have to now. Two minutes left in the ball game. They're down by two and only two minutes remaining. They got to take some chances at this point. You got to stunt. You have to blitz. You have to tear the ball out of the running back's hands. Take some chances. Anything you can do to create a turnover. First and ten. Packers with no timeouts. Best of Verde. Little bootleg, naked bootleg. And that's not what he wanted. He goes out of bounds to stop the clock. Well, he's not going to make anybody uh, forget you, McElhaney, will he? That play actually surprised me. Uh, well, I, I think what they thought, they were going to fool the entire pack de Packer defense, and they thought the test verdict was going to waltz around the end and perhaps into the end zone. Remember, he's got some pretty good feet on him. The thing he didn't want to do there was get out of bounds. He just should have fallen down in bounds and used the clock. Hugh McElhaney, huh? Yeah. Back Never in your him. days? Yeah. <laughs> 154 left, second and six. Now will stay up the middle with Howard. Pick up of two. After the interception by Robinson, there was 532 left in the game. The Packers have not touched the football since. Well, no timeouts remaining for the Pack. The Bucks have all three. But, you know, Ray Perkins last night said that he thinks this team is, is one that's going to emerge, it's going to win, it's going to contend. We've got a tough four games ahead of them, but clearly both these teams are much better than they were a year ago. Third and four. Tampa Bay 10 out of 13 today on third down conversion. A team that was horrible in that stat last year. And this will depend on the placement. William Howard, he's close at the 18. Stop the clock for a measurement, I believe. 54 seconds, the clock is stopped. You know, guys, if, if they don't make it, Jim, it really puts Ray Perkins in a dilemma. Do you, do you attempt a field goal and risk getting it blocked, or do you go for it on fourth down? And if you don't get it, the other team still has 54 seconds and can beat you with a field goal. They do not have it, that decision now. He indeed faces that decision, that dilemma. What do you think, Pat? Well, I think you're, the way his defense has played, I, I think I would probably go for it because he's converted, I think, 10 of 13 first downs. The offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage. They've converted a lot of short yard situations with Lars Tate and William Howard. And that appears to be what he's going to do. 54 seconds to go. Now, now turn the tables. The Packers need an all-out blitz here. They have to shut him down. And Vinny should use as much of the clock as he can because the clock is running. Tom McHale comes in as an extra lineman. William Harris, Ron Hall, the tight ends. It's Howard and Tate. Fourth down. I think he has it. Lars Tate going over the top. Johnny Holland hit him high, but I still think Tate may have got it. First down, Tampa Bay. And they will not even have to snap it again. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will win their opener. A lot of expectations and... Uh confidence on open day opening day for the Buccaneers and you can see why they are a vastly improved team Ray Perkins has got to be happy with the way his offensive line played his defense did a great job when they had to this is a team Tampa Bay that opened up last year with a 41 14 loss to Philadelphia and really kind of setting the mood for the whole year not only for the team but for testa Verde in that game against the eagles he threw five interceptions in the opening game a year ago and as we said yesterday he is not going to have this that kind of year he's not going to let himself have that kind of year a different kind of guy no interceptions today 
dumped the ball off to his backs, didn't force the, the, the ball downfield. Both of these teams with high expectations. They both played well today, but Testaverde, 22 of 27, 205 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions, and the Bucks win it. They're 1-0.